Hey, Joe with Human Fluence. Welcome back for more light and insight. You've probably heard the old adage, if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? In light of the double slit experiment, we might reframe the question. If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to observe it, does it even exist? This question touches on the nature of reality and observation. Today, let's embark on a journey into the mysterious world of quantum physics, where we encounter one of the most mind-bending experiments ever conducted, the double slit experiment. This experiment not only challenges our understanding of reality, but also hints at profound connections between the physical world and consciousness. I know there's many videos on this, but I'm gonna try and break it down in a different way to make it more easy to understand. Imagine a simple setup, a screen with two vertical slits and a detector screen behind it. Now let's shoot tiny particles like electrons or photons, one at a time towards the slits. You might expect each particle to go through one slit or the other and hit the detector screen, forming two distinct bands corresponding to the slits. But here's where the magic happens. When both slits are open and we don't observe the particles, they create an interference pattern on the detector screen. Multiple bands, like ripples in a pond where waves overlap. This pattern suggests that each particle behaves like a wave, going through both slits simultaneously and interfering with itself. This wave-like behavior is mysterious because intuitively particles should act like tiny solid balls, not waves. But it gets even more intriguing. When scientists place a detector to observe which slit the particle actually goes through, the interference pattern disappears. Instead, we see two bands, as if the particles decided to behave like particles again, going through one slit or the other. You see, the mere act of observing changes the outcome. So what does this mean? At its core, the double slit experiment reveals that particles can act as both waves and particles, a concept known as wave-particle duality. But even more puzzling is the role of the observer. The implications of this is that reality at the quantum level doesn't exist in a definite state until it is observed. The act of measurement the very presence of an observer seems to collapse the wave function, forcing particles to choose a definite state. This phenomenon has profound implications. The suggestion that reality at the quantum level doesn't exist in a definite state until observed. Or in other words, consciousness itself may play a crucial role in shaping reality. This idea challenges our classical view of an objective observer independent universe and introduces a profound connection between the observer and the observed. Let's break it down even further. Imagine a world where the act of observing a flower doesn't just reveal its beauty, but actually brings it into being. In the realm of quantum mechanics, this isn't just poetic. It's a genuine possibility. Before observation, particles exist in a state of probability, potentialities waiting to be actualized. The observer's consciousness collapses these probabilities into a single outcome, creating reality as we know it. This intertwining of consciousness and the physical world leads to fascinating questions. Are we, as conscious beings, co-creators? Does our observation and perception actively shape the world around us? These questions push the boundaries of science and venture into the realms of philosophy and spirituality. I'm reminded of a few quotes that resonate deeply with these ideas. Max Planck, the father of quantum theory, once said, I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. We cannot get behind consciousness. Everything that we talk about, everything that we regard as existing, postulates consciousness. 
or Albert Einstein mused, Reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. Then there's Niels Bohr, a pioneer in quantum mechanics who famously stated, If quantum mechanics hasn't profoundly shocked you, you haven't understood it yet. Or John Archibald Wheeler, another key figure in quantum theory, proposed, We are not only observers, we are participators. In some strange sense, this is a participatory universe. The double slit experiment also challenges our understanding of causality and locality. Traditionally, we believe that cause and effect happen in a linear sequence and that objects must be physically connected to interact. However, quantum mechanics shows us that particles can be entangled, connected in such a way that the state of one instantly influences the state of another, regardless of distance. This phenomenon, known as quantum entanglement, suggests that information can travel faster than the speed of light. Again, define classical physics. In essence, the double slit experiment opens a window into a universe where particles can be waves, where observation can create reality, and where everything is interconnected in ways we are only beginning to understand. It invites us to rethink our assumptions about the nature of reality and the role of consciousness in the cosmos. Turning gears for a minute, let's take a moment to consider the stark implications of these findings on religion. Many religious traditions posit a clear distinction between the divine and the mundane, between the creator and the creation. The idea that consciousness can shape reality blurs these distinctions. It suggests that the divine might not be an external force acting upon the world, but something intrinsic to consciousness itself. For centuries, religions have offered structured narratives and doctrines to explain the nature of existence often placing God as the ultimate observer and creator. The double slit experiment implies that we too, as conscious beings, have the power to shape our world, potentially echoing the creative force traditionally attributed to the divine. This could be seen as both empowering and unsettling, as it challenges long-held beliefs for some about our place in the universe. Furthermore, the interconnectedness revealed by quantum entanglement resonates with many spiritual teachings about unity and oneness. If everything is interconnected at a fundamental level, it supports the idea that separation is but an illusion, a concept found in various mystical traditions. Then there's the laws of the universe. I'll link a video here. Such as the law of attraction, echo this point which states that like attracts like, meaning our thoughts and feelings do indeed manifest our reality. The law suggests that we are active participants in the creation of our life experience. The hermetic principle of as above, so below reflects this idea as well, that the microcosm, our consciousness, mirrors the macrocosm, or the universe. These principles challenge traditional religious doctrines that often place humans in a passive role, subject to the whims of an external deity. Instead, they propose that we are co-creators, possessing the power to shape our destiny through our consciousness and intentions. Furthermore, what does this mean for us? It means that reality is far more mysterious and interconnected than we ever imagined. So, let's revisit the classic question. If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? In light of the double slit experiment, we might reframe this to if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to observe it, does it even exist? Human fluence, out. <laughs>